Hello students, this is Mrs. Yaud, and today I'm going to teach you Chapter 2, Lesson 5 for my Algebra 1 students. This lesson is about solving compound inequalities. Today we're going to start on page 50 in your journals. A compound inequality is an inequality formed by joining two inequalities together, and those two inequalities will be joined together either with the word and or with the word or. So let's first talk about the word and. If I had this, I say x is greater than negative 6, and at the same time, x is less than 3. So let's take each piece at a time. I'm first going to do x is greater than negative 6 in yellow. So I'm going to have greater than or equal to. So I have a closed circle at 6, and it's going to be going up that way. Now let's take a look at what x less than 3 looks like. s less than 3 is an open circle at 3 and heading down. So we want to think about when this is both true at the same time and. So x has to be greater than negative 6, but also at the same time x is, has to be less than 3. So our answer for that is going to be a closed circle at negative 6 and an open circle at 3, and it's everything in between. And so that means that these numbers here are not part of the answer. These numbers out here are not part of the answer. The only parts of the answer is negative 6 and then going up to positive 3, but not including positive 3 since it doesn't have an equals to sign there. So that's how this would look. Uh, another way to write this is whenever you have an and, you can write it a little bit different. You could put the number that's the lowest number, which is negative 6, and you can say less than or equal to x, and then in this case it's less than 3. And so if you look at it, um, this piece here is the same as what we see up here, right? Uh, negative 6 is less than or equal to x. That's the same as x greater than or equal to negative 6. And also, this piece here is the same as what we see up here, x less than 3, x less than 3. And so it makes it a little bit easier for us just to combine them together as in one larger um, answer uh, instead of separating them out. So I'm going to call this example number one. Okay, let's do another example. This time I'm going to give you the graph first. So if I give you this as the graph, what you would see is that the smallest number is negative three, and it's an open circle, so that would be just less than, and then the variable goes in the middle, and then we have less than or equal to, and then the largest number up here is positive three. And so again, this is the this is and because it's true that um, negative three is less than x, and also at the same time x is less than or equal to positive three. Okay, let's think about the or side really quick. We have x is less than or equal to negative six, or this time x is greater than positive three. So let's put that on a number line. So let's first look at this one. X is less than or equal to negative six. So that would be a closed circle at negative 6 and heading down. And then we have the word or, and then x is greater than 3. So that would be an open circle at 3 and heading up. This time with the word or, it means that it could either be this one in all of these numbers down here, or it could be all of these numbers up here. Okay, for the second example on this one, I'm going to start with the number line. Okay, so let's say we had this number line. Uh, so we'll take each piece at a time. Let's take a look at the lower one first. So this one says x is less than negative 4. That's what this part of the number line tells me. And then since it's um, it, the way that the graph is showing me is that it's an or, and then we have x is greater than 0. That's what this part is telling me here. So we have x less than negative 4 or x is greater than 0. So as you can see, whenever you have an and, it's going to be in between the two numbers. When you have an or, it's going to be those two numbers and then heading in opposite directions on the number line. 
Okay, let's look at page 51 in your journals. Let's take a look at number one. A number u is less than seven and greater than three. So we need to pay attention. We have the word and here. That means that we're going to have the one that looks like this on a number line. We're gonna have something and then in between. Okay, so that's what we need to think about. So we have the variable u that they want us to use. So that's gonna go in the middle. And then we need to think about the two numbers. So we have greater than three. So u is greater than three and it is less than seven. So this is what we would write for our uh, compound inequality. And now we just need to graph it. So we have between three and seven, they're open circles and it's everything in between. For number two, it says a number D is less than negative two or greater than or equal to two. So uh, we need to look and see we have the word or here. So that means that it's going to be one that looks like this. Okay. So we have D is less than negative two or, and then the other one says D greater than or equal to positive two. So we would have an open circle at negative two heading down and a closed circle at positive two heading up. All right, let's take a look at number four. A number C is more than negative four or at most six and a half. So we have the word or here. So that one is the uh, one that looks like this. So we have C more than four, so that's greater than, sorry, negative four, um, or we would say C is at most negative six and a half, so at most is less than or equal to negative six and a half. And so now we just need to graph it. So there I have it graphed. I would like for you to try number three and number five on your own. So pause the video and then turn it back on when you are ready to check your work. All right, here I have my answers. Please check your work and see how you did. Ready to move on to page 52. So on number six, we need to solve the inequality. Now remember that these are two separate pieces. So if you wanted to, you could separate them apart. So this would be four less than x minus three. And because it's the one in the middle, uh, x minus three is less than or equal to seven and then solve each from there. And so when I solve, I get x is uh, greater than seven and at the same time, x is less than or equal to 10. Now, some people like to break it apart like that and sometimes you have to break it apart. However, um, most students like to keep it this way and then just solve from here. So let me show you what to do there. If we were to do just leave it, we would add three here, but since remember these are two each individual pieces that we are actually putting together. So that means we have to add it to the four and add it to the seven. So then we get seven is less than X, which is less than or equal to 10. And if you look at these two answers, they are identical. This one is just having the inequalities put together, and this one is having the compound inequalities broken apart. Either way, the answer is exactly the same, so however you wish to do it is fine. Sometimes you have to do it this way. The times that you have to do it is if you had, like, let's say there was an X attached to the seven here, then you would have to separate them apart in order to solve. Otherwise, you can just leave it this way and solve from there. Okay, let's go ahead and graph. So I have an open circle at seven, closed circle at 10, and it's everything in between because it's an and. Number seven. So here we're just gonna keep them together. We're not gonna separate them apart because we don't have a variable here or here. So they don't need to be separated. So this time I need to get rid of my negative five. It's being multiplied by G. So we're gonna divide out negative five. And I don't know if you remember, but whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, what happens to these signs here? Hopefully you remember that they need to flip and it is true with compound inequalities as well. So then we would write this as negative three. We gotta flip the sign. The sign needs to be flipped less than or equal to now. 
and then we have g, and then we need to flip the sign again because we multiple divided by a negative, less than or equal to positive 2. So here is my answer, and now I'm ready to graph. I got closed circle at negative 3 and positive 2 and everything in between. All right, let's take a look at number 8. Number 8 has an or, so it's not going to be in between like this. It's going to be the two numbers and then going opposite directions. So I'm going to go ahead and solve these two. Uh, we're going to subtract 4 on both sides here. And so this one will be z is less than negative 2, or, and then we're going to divide out negative 3. And we divide it out a negative, so don't forget, we got to flip our signs. So this would be z is greater than 9. And so here is our answer, and now we just need to graph. So we have open circles at 2 heading down and at 9 heading up. I needed to count by 2 to make room for my numbers. I would like for you to do number 9 and 10 on your own, so please pause the video and try those on your own, and then turn it back on to see how you did. Okay, number 9, I got t is less than 2, so it's open circle going down, or t is greater than or equal to 5, closed circle going up. On number 10, I got 8 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2, so this time it's an and, so it's negative 8 and 2 and everything in between. Let's read number 11. A certain machine operates properly when the relative humidity H satisfies the inequality, and then it gives us this, this inequality here. They want us to solve for H to find the range of values for which the machine operates properly. So my first step is going to be to distribute the two here. Now I'm going to add 100 to all the parts of the inequality, of the compound inequality. And lastly, divide by 2 on all the parts of the compound inequality. And so there I have my answers. So that means that the relative humidity needs to be in between 20 and 80, including 20 and 80, in order for the machine to operate properly. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.